Objection! You guys know Evangelion? <laughs> that one. This show was created when those guys got shit-faced drunk. It turned out pretty good. The story goes somewhat like this. Gainax had just finished broadcasting Gurren Lagann. That's a big deal because the show was a massive success. So the whole team behind the show had the same thought. I, I need, need to, to get, get f***ed up. up. The crew takes a trip somewhere and eventually came the drinks. Now I'm sure the usual stuff was going on. Conversations like, I love you, bro. No, bro Summer. I love you. No, I love you, bro. I love you, my n***a. I made that part up. Here's the truth according to Wikipedia. The team, in a drunken stupor, begins throwing ideas around. There's ideas for how to animate next time, which shows they want to work on, etc. Hiromi Wakabayashi is listening to everyone scream, and he's like, Holy fuck. I've been waiting for this. He suggests a show inspired by American adult animation, stuff like South Park or Drawn Together. He'd call it panty and stocking with garter belt. It would push boundaries, be offensive, and not be put into a box. They liked this idea so much, nearly all of the concepts for the show were made on this one trip. And by a miracle, the team started having fun. You could see it oozing out of the concept art with things you'd never think of. There's little candle demons, guns made out of underwear, a pedophile priest who is in white. Who thinks of this stuff? Ideas bounced around the writing room, so much so that by the end they had enough content for six seasons of the show. Of course, it ended up hilarious and insanely fun to watch, but not right away. The crew wanted Panty and Stocking to push Japan's boundaries to the upper limit, but if we exclude porn, Japan's upper limit is like not super crazy. So, word on the internet is, the show didn't even perform well there. What this anime needed was freedom. In America, our adult cartoons touch all sorts of degeneracy. If you've ever watched Super Jail, you have no doubt wondered how the fuck it's on cable. So Funimation purchases the rights to Panty and Stocking and starts working on a dub. This would end up being the greatest thing that could have happened to the show. They tell Jamie March, the writer, director, and voice actress of the show, to America the shit out of it. Jamie takes it upon herself to push the show as far as she can take it, and by some miracle, yet again, they begin to have fun. Funimation's new dub changed the show. It changed changed how the characters acted, the jokes, entire conversations, and it became something completely unique. People loved the changes, calling it an orgasm of excellence, the best anime of 2010. This shit is awful. Panty and Stalking is an anime that relies on swears, penis jokes, and violence as its selling point. This anime offends me. Not a single thing about it didn't offend me. It's possible Funimation went too far with this anime, but too far is what I'm all about, baby. What's in this show? Why do so many people like it? Why do people hate it? To find these answers, we're gonna have... The intro is completely unbefitting of 2010. I was blown away by the little title cards, the expressive animation, and sweeping shots of the city. Holy fucking shit! <laughs> then I met Panty. Oh! Panty is what we would call a good old fashioned whore, and also our main character. Then they're stalking. They're both sisters and angels who were kicked out of heaven. As punishment, they're sent to Earth to take out evil ghosts in exchange for god tokens. Today's target, a ghost made out of poopy. Hey! This show's gonna get me demonetized, I swear to god. We're not done meeting the main characters though. The best one's name is Chuck. They fucking killed Chuck. And finally, Garterbelt. Garterbelt is a special case, as he's a black guy voice acted by a white guy who's also Vegeta, who's written by a Japanese guy. He also has some of the best dialogue in the entire show. If we die out here, we're gonna kill you! Patience is a virtue! Shut the fuck up, bitches! So after we meet them, the two take off, and they find their poop ghost. Wait. He's merely a handsome plumber. You're a hot piece of ass. Do not do it. La 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 you can't hear this, you can't hear this! After that, the two go back home because they didn't do anything they were supposed to do. This is where you start realizing how the show's gonna play out. Panty and Stalking are much more like you and I than they initially seem. They care a lot about the same things we do. Cock. Sugar, the essentials. Dumb stuff like saving people and killing ghosts? Eh, that gets in the way. Every episode is about a different ghost that Panty and Stalking slowly work themselves up to fighting. Each time in a different way. <laughs> What happened to the ghost we were supposed to worry about? Oh, oh, it's... 
It's Evangelion. Holy shit! What the fuck are we gonna do? <clears throat> Penny and Stocking turn hot for 10 seconds and finally do their jobs. This is one half of episode one. Remember, they take inspiration from cartoons, so every episode is split into two 11 minute halves, just like the shows you used to eat cereal to. This appreciation for American culture is the heart of what makes Panty and Stocking so unique. There's references to Ren and Stimpy, Courage the Cowardly Dog, Transformers, the Michael Bay version, the Powerpuff Girls, High School Musical, Fight Club, Beverly Hills Cop, <gasps> Pulp Fiction, South Park, some scenes look straight out of Foster's home, and Chuck is a reference to Invader Zim. Every episode has some reference around the corner. They're super fun to find. It's awesome as that is, the way this impacts the format is more important. Let's say I want to build a powerful narrative in a story that takes itself a bit more seriously. I might not just need characters you like, but ones that experience hardship, face their bad decisions, and fall again and again and again and again until they figure out how to stand up straight. Because that's when people grow, and when you capture that, you get those memorable climaxes where the main characters reach the end of their journey. This is usually only possible if you don't blow your fucking characters into smithereens the last episode. Penny and Stocking sacrifices the ability to create tension in exchange for specking all the way into entertainment. It sucks if you want a meaningful story, but when you want to eat cereal and scratch your nuts, this sort of thing is perfect. It allows the creators to be free. When each episode has practically fuck all to do with the last, there are no wrong answers. Hey, you want a Transformers parody where the main robot is named Coctimus Prime? Go ahead, make Tom Cruise the game show host where a lawyer monkey decides the fate of the main characters. Who gives a dang? There's this episode that confused the shit out of me at first. Episode 3 starts off in a desaturated, super serious warboat. Everyone's scared. That's a weird explosion. Everyone's scared. Is his handwriting... Spermy? Everyone's pound, huh? If you haven't noticed it yet, let past me explain it to you. Wait. These are sperm soldiers. Ew! 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 Can I talk to the orchestra for a second? This episode starts off in the perspective of fucking sperm soldiers. It's a ball, never knowing what's gonna happen next, especially when the cast is trying to push every boundary they can. Your expectations constantly fall short of what's actually going to happen next. But if it's unfunny, yuck! <clears throat> Carlton. You called, sir. Fetch me the gringos. Right away, sir. Yes, these people. The character designs are so eye-catching. Constant references and the concepts for these episodes are super unique. But it was missing spice. What Funimation did, these gringos took a look at all the hard work Gainax produced and polished it with a different perspective. They disregarded strict translation. So much of the dialogue comes out completely natural. It sells the jokes and the characters become believable. So when Garterbelt said, All right, you hookers, go wash your asses in the sink. I paused right there because I've said this sentence almost word for word to people. All right, hookers, wash your asses in the sink. Mm. Humor varies greatly depending on where you are. When you watch an anime with a good translation, half the shit is still gonna fly over your head. We don't get the puns or the references to politicians, and we've developed a separate sense of humor. But when you strip down that barrier and say, fuck being accurate, you get something like ghost stories. God, you are four of the ugliest fucking kids I've ever had the misfortune of laying my eyes on. I can't wait for this bitch to kill- As opposed to ghost stories, however, Panty and Stocking works with the original content in perfect harmony. The basic characters and plot are intact, but now they know the ins and outs of American culture. They reference ESPN, they name drop Real Housewives of DC. This line right here. You better not get all fat again. Otherwise you'll have to get way good at blowjobs. How did they know? Fat women are insane at blowjobs! You would never hear this in an anime! I especially like how they've portrayed the characters here. Everyone is so extremely distinct from one another. Penny is a crazed harlot, Garter is a walking stereotype but somehow less racist than this, Stocking is a cute goth who likes fat dorks, don't get excited she's not real. These huge personalities collide and drum up so much chemistry it's insane. That's how the show gets away with an entire episode taking place on a couch. I think a lot of these shows are scared to have female leads with serious defects. The most I'll see is a chick that's kind of mean because she secretly likes the main character or the classic donor that got bullied for being too pretty. Alright bro, we get it. You gotta sell merch of the character so you don't want to show her pooping or being a hoe. I get it. But that's what makes it so refreshing to see female leads who are weird as hell. Panty is panty. Stalking. 
Well, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen, and I want her to do it again. But that's not a katana in her hand. Let's not understate the importance of a shitty main character. Kazuma, Subaru, Riley Freeman, Rick Sanchez, Peter, Homer, Bojack, you're quite acquainted with this archetype, but rarely do you see chicks fill that role, especially not as elegantly as this. Panty and stocking hurls nostalgia, gorgeous colors, and fire jokes at you from left and right. There's nothing quite like it. It's so brave artistically, but it's pretty stupid. A lot of what I said can be flipped. I like how the characters are bad people. These bitches do not care about nobody. I like bad words. They cuss like fucking pirates, okay? I like how they sit around and do nothing. They stay maxing out Gardner's credit card. They can't Shit. keep a job to save their fucking lives. Okay, lady, you're just picking on me now. You were describing me. Listen. I love panty and stocking, okay? Oh, okay, we're good. But this show uh -oh. really does not like black people. Guys, I have to admit, I actually do like black people, so I kind of see where she's coming from. But you missed one thing, ma'am. They gave him the funniest line in the show, not the two gringas. Some to think about. The humor is definitely not for everybody. Much of it revolves around being vulgar or saying the word pee pee. But if you have thick skin, an open mind, and for some reason any of this seems appealing, you'll see how sick the show can be. The art is like Every scene is extremely stylized. It leaves an aesthetic footprint on your mind. Onomatopoeias skate around the screen. Every time a villain dies, it cuts to the crew blowing up a real doll, so you know they had fun. The show gives off such a sense of freedom. When people can create without fearing the result, something like Panty and Stocking comes along. Or High Guardian Spice. Maybe fearing the result is a good thing.